USU family, community, my beautiful listeners, welcome, welcome to the USU podcast. Oh, MG, oh my goodness, today's episode, I am in love with our guest. She is amazing. You're going to learn all about why she's amazing. You're going to, I know, fall in love with Satya, with her story, with her gorgeous jewelry, with this, with all of it. So let me introduce you to Satya Skinetti. Satya is the founder and creator of the gorgeous Satya Jewelry and a renowned speaker in the wellness space. After embarking on a spiritual journey that led her to study Eastern religious traditions for over 30 years, she was given her spiritual name, Satya, which in Sanskrit means truth. Satya founded her gorgeous jewelry line in 2002 with a vision to inspire others to follow their own path to truth. Her background is actually in social work and early education, and her passion for helping others also led her to found the Satya Foundation, which provides opportunities and assistance to children all over the globe and today, and has raised over $1 million in donations. I love that. Satya's dedication to yoga and manifestation has earned her a trusted place in the wellness industry as an inspiring yogi, speaker, and teacher where she seeks to empower and inspire others. I have to say, because we have already chatted before, Satya, I am so flippin' excited to have you here. I'm wearing my favorite pendulum necklace from Satya Jewelry, and I'm just so honored to be in your presence. Thank you for being here. I feel so excited too. Thanks. And that was a great intro. I was like, who is that? Who's she talking about? <laughs> Don't you love that? You're like, hey, oh my God. do I know her? <laughs> right. I know her. I am her. I love it. Well, one of the things I love about, first of all, I love, love your name, meaning truth. And I will just tell everyone, I always ask the question to my beautiful listeners. I always ask the question of my guests, is there anything you want to make sure I ask or don't ask you? Um, just, you know, to make sure that I'm, that I'm just being really cognizant of asking questions that are going to be in alignment. And Satya said, well, my name means truth. So there you go. And I'm like, this is going to be a darn good, delicious conversation. That's all I got to say. So I think it would be so cool to just talk about your story, like how, you know, cause we can see the 20 years Satya knows is celebrating 20 years. And I think people can see that and not have a sense like, oh, this, this took something to get here. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna zip it and let you just share away my friend. Okay. It's really, really nice to meet you. I know we were going on and like could hang out all day. So, so uh, yeah, um, you know, it's been a journey, you know, we always say we're designed for the journey and, um, you know, it, it doesn't stop. Right. And we've all been on a collective journey these last couple of years, but you know, I'm going to say 20 years ago, just this last month, um, I took a leap of faith and a, a little bit of like, I got to get out of here. I was actually working at another jewelry company, taking a hiatus for my social work degree. And this beautiful, I was doing a lot of nonprofit stuff, but really not seeing the impact that I was hoping. And I said, oh, okay, I'll just work for a friend's jewelry company. In the interim, um, I started doing lots of yoga, meditation. I became a Reiki master, was so interested in <clears throat> always in the spiritual aspects of life. And, and I, I was always been a seeker of sorts. So um, I somehow decided um, I'm gonna, oh, it's 9-11. I watched the towers go down in front of my eyes in September. And I was like, okay, what am I doing? Um, what if that was me? Did I make the impact I was hoping to make? And what if that was me? Like, how would I be remembered? And it was this little, like, whoa, wake up. This is, you know, like, get to work, Sati. You've got things to do. So I, I took the leap and I, I signed myself to go up um, to the Bahamas for one month and get my first teacher training. And um, that month was the most incredible month of my life. And I'd love to be able to do it again. <laughs> life is rather too busy. But within those 30 days, I did nothing but um, get quiet, meditate, do yoga, eat only vegetarian, very healthy food, um, did a lot of journal writing. And the dreams were so powerful. You know, when you get quiet, all the answers are inside us. We just don't create the space to make it happen, right? So the last day, and I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to go home. And I had a big job waiting for me, way over six figures back then. And I was like, I don't want to go back there. Big decisions had to be made. And the 
the last day we were getting our ceremony and getting our um, certificate, they asked if we wanted a spiritual name. So I was like, sure, if it's included, because I don't know my job when I get back, I don't know what to do with my life. And um, they gave me, behind my certificate, it's actually in my office still to this day, there's a little name, it says Satya, behind my certificate. And my friend next to me goes, that means truth. I was like, wow. So, you know, 9-11 and how it was all over the dis-ease of truth and fighting. I was like, wow, what a name. I went to bed that night. And I don't know if anybody's a dreamer out there, but when I have dreams, they come and they're like, whoa, who was in my room? So that night I had a dream that I was going to came, I came, that I was going to design jewelry of all truths and donate money to children around the world. And I woke up like, whoa, who was that? I ran to the phone. I called my best friend at the time. I was like, quit your job. I've got the name. I have an idea. We're going to do this. So within a week, I was um, incorporated. I ran back to New York, called um, a friend who, who does small business, and we, we hit the ground. Um, and, you know, a lot of, I think, what ha- helped me do that was the fearlessness that yoga and meditation and the power of going inside yourself, you know, and you're not being blasted with everybody, what they're saying, who they're saying, and everybody's opinion, which really stops us from our, our, our fearlessness. And I did not ever look back. It was like, I got the idea. It was definitely from the divine. <laughs> I hit the ground running. Um, and yeah, within a week we were incorporated and, you know, made more money than I could ever dream of the first year. Um, and it kept going. So, you know, and again, that's 20 years ago this month. And um, there's been a lot of ebbs and flows. And my partner and I are no longer together, but I'm running the brand. Uh, it's my complete 100% um, my company right now. I have an amazing team. People have been with me for 20 years. <laughs> They're family. I've seen their kids grow up and on and on. Um, but, you know, you create a community around you. And, you know, I think everybody really loves the idea that we do give back. So I started the foundation probably a year and a half in. And um, I get to go see the kids in India um, in Thailand. Um, and we, uh, we are one extended family and beyond. So it's been, it's been really incredible. I always share, you know, when you have a pure intention, the doors will open. And When I started the company, it was not, I want to make a lot of money. No, it was going to help people find their individual truth and then donate money to children around the world. So as I've done so much mentoring and speaking around starting your own business and kind of getting out of your own way, um, if you can run away for a month, great. But if you can't, um, get really clear as to what you want to make happen. And if you do get that incredible dream, How are you going to serve the world with it? Mm. Don't make it about you and you only. Because then the angels, God, whoever you call into your life, they're going to open up every opportunity. And I've been so blessed. I've worked with so many incredible um, people in, in my world, you know, from celebrities to a lot of influencers that are my friends and Um, They call me and reach out and it's like, wow, look, how why am I so, you know, so, you know, keeping that really pure, beautiful intention out into the world, you're only going to attract, like love attracts love, light attracts light. Um, It's really important to keep that spirit up around you while you're trying to create something big for yourself. Okay. So (laughs) your story, I'm just, it's beautiful on so many levels. And there's so many little nuggets here that I want to talk about and unpack. I mean, first of all, you getting this spiritual name that means truth and then having this dream. So, you know, what I'm first thinking of is Satya, most people like they'll have a dream, like a literal, you had a dream and either dismiss it or kill it before it gets a chance to, to really, to, to bloom. And what is so interesting, and I, I'm just saying this for people listening, like you took action, you followed that. And it wasn't from, you said it was from this pure intention. Yeah. yeah. Just amazing. And so you did that, that week, in a week, you incorporated. Within a week, yeah. 
There was no, there was no hesitant or, you know, that, that, that internal dialogue that I think my mother gave me where you can't do it or you're not good enough. And yeah. We get those. Right. And um, I had that and I struggled with it and I didn't start my business till I was 40. Don't do the man. But um, <laughs> you know, I, it's never too late. It, it's really never too late. Um, yeah. And I think people just get stuck. Oh, it didn't happen for me or, Oh, I'm to this or, Oh, this isn't in place we can't sit and question if you get a hit something like yes. so clear the way I did. Yeah. And you know, you hit the ground with that and you say, thank you. And, and I'm going to do this and rally in every person you can to help you make that happen. Um, yeah. What you just said, I have chills all over me. Um, your, we speak intuition and that language here. And so I can tell you a lot of listeners, this is what we talk about is like really tuning in. And I love what you said about, you got to get quiet. You cannot, you've got to get, you got to go in. You got this information, this, this, this nudge, this, this higher purpose by quieting, by going within yourself, um, not from, you know, listening to everything else and comparing yourself. Um, and I think it's just so, to me that you talked about the fearlessness. I think that that's something I would love to hear a little more about that fearlessness and pursuing this. Um, you know, my sense is that, you know, often we get into how is this going to happen? Right. And the yeah. manifestation. And what I'm hearing is you were like, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do the next right action. Yeah. You know, it's funny too, because I went for the teacher training. I started doing Reiki and I'm a Reiki master and I had such a hard time charging for it because I thought it was a gift, but I used to pray every morning. like, okay, God, just bring me somebody. If you want me to help, you know, if you want me to help channel your, your amazing energy and people would come, I mean, everybody, and this is 20 years ago. So nobody was doing Reiki back then, but sure enough, I would find a friend or I'd be like, do you want me to do this on you? And like, everybody was open. And I would like people with like either sneezing attacks or nosebleeds. I had everything happening, voices coming out of my mouth. And I'm like, okay, maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. So my intention, this is the other very important part to this. My intention was to go down to the Bahamas, get really clear. And I wanted to get comfortable charging for this beautiful gift I had. Mm. Um, because I was just giving it away and I had a really hard time. And I was so, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to become a Reiki healer and God's going to give me the gifts to heal people at one at a time. And if I didn't help go with an open mind and really allow, God had a whole different plan for me. He said, you can't do one at a time. There's a whole world out there that needs some healing. Let's do it with a jewelry company. <laughs> I mean, think about it. How, how, how ironic, like me starting this, I would have never in a million years, I don't have any background in jewelry. I don't know how to run a business really. Um, but here it is. Here's the name. Here's the idea. You have the power and the energy I'm going to help. And I do believe you feel the energy with the jewelry shared. I don't think it's me. I'm just the delivery girl. And I believe, you know, the way the brand was ignited, it, it was divine. And I believe that the universe, God, I like to say God, girl, God, whatever, yeah. um, really said, let's, let's do this. Let's empower women, men um, to feel their best, to wear a piece of truth that, that carries them, reminds them of their beauty, their grace, um, and their abilities to manifest all things, right? Um, so, so that idea of, you know, we go in, this is what I want, don't get stuck on it, because mm -hmm. The universe might have a whole other bigger plan. And if I got some, no, I got to do a Reiki master. I would have never, never had the guts, the, the drive. So you can write down what I'm trying to manifest, but then you almost got to put it to prayer. Go, okay, let's see what, what's going to come and keep your eyes wide open. When you're doing this work, it's so important. You look for the signs. You see who's coming in, people, oh, I just met this amazing person. <laughs> what, what, what is this, you know, connection? So um, I think we just have to trust um, a lot more. And it's hard to do um, when things are so um, unstable right now for a lot of people, right? Um, but if you can, if you get quiet um, and you try and tap into that inner knowing, um, I, I feel like it's just imperative to really get past any fear 
or those I can't, you just gotta shoot them out of your head. <laughs> really, no, no, I had a great therapist in my 30s and um, she said, we were, I was doing some work around my mom and um, it was like this internal dialogue where I, mean, I was like, every time I wanna go do something, I have this little internal dialogue that says, you can't do it. And she's like, when, when that happens, just say, no, like, shut it up. And, um, she, and, and I used to be, in, I'd be in the subway. I'm like, well, I can't really stream this. But she's like, just do it anyway. Everybody else is weird in New York City. They won't even notice. <laughs> but um, I've really trained myself to stop that internal dialogue of, I can't. It's not the right time. I'm not good enough. Um, because we all have those, right? From, from this lifetime, from another lifetime, from whoever put that in our psyche. So I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Oh my gosh. Such, I, yes. And love that you, oh my gosh, love that you, what you said about don't get stuck on what you want. I have to say, this is one of my favorite high, most high vibrational conversations, just listening to you. I'm going to just say you my dear listener, listen in, take in the energy, such as energy, because what I'm noticing with you, you said this, you went in with this open mind with a pure intention and it's so interesting, right? If you had gotten stuck on being a Reiki master and healing mm -hmm. that way, you, you would have missed out on this. I mean, I was actually, you know, I wear this pendulum, not just because we're doing this interview today. I wear this almost every day. I use it. Um, you gave me the brilliant idea to put a prayer in it. I have some rose quartz in it. It is gorgeous. And this work, it's like, you opened yourself up to the divine, having a better, different, even more expansive way of working through you as you with you through joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And even just the philanthropic, like I was a social worker by degree and I wasn't making the impact. I'm like, really, what am I doing? And, and like God, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, I can give money. Like there was a lot of money in the jewelry world when I started and we just hit the ground and we were like, you know, everything we did no oh, you know we, we work with children all over the world and now I've gotten a little more concise because I have two amazing schools in India that I've been helping um but yeah I would I mean what better than a social worker with money right <laughs> and I still get to go hug the kids <laughs> so, which is really fun so beautiful. I got chills the whole interview. I'm telling you the whole time talking to you, I'm like, my whole body feels like I'm freezing and I'm not. Those are like, I call those, right. Those are like those, those knowing bumps. It's like, yeah, yeah. Those are yeah. great. Um, yeah. and they're important right now. You know, we, we need yeah. to, we need to tap into this. They're here. You know, I feel, I feel it's yeah. a little out there, but I think you have the audience not here. Nope. No, yeah. nothing too out there for here. I'm, I'm just saying it all of my beautiful listeners who write in, they're like, thank you for talking about these things. So it's all good. So, so there's angels, they're out there and they're flying all around us and they've got a lot of people screaming for them right now. So when you do call upon your angels, speak out and say, Hey, I need a little attention here. And they really do show up. And sometimes I'm like, can you just make sure, you know, I'm patient, but can you just give me a little sign today that you're, that you're listening? And sure enough, something will happen. It's, I'm just like, really? And, yeah. and those things are what keeps us going. Just little, you got to look at the little wins every day. We can't get mm. stuck on the big, you know, drawdowns because there's a lot of them, you know, yeah. we, we got to stop watching the news. That's what I oh, do. Yeah. It's Amen to that. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, it's interesting. And I'm just saying this, you, because I think it's actually very relevant. When this started, this idea, you said it was 2002, it was right after 9-11. And I'm just correlating, like, it's such a traumatic low time. I can't even believe you saw the tower. I mean, that's traumatic in itself. And, you know, what stemmed out of that? And I'm thinking right now, obviously, this has been an intensive two years. Yeah. And you know, it's funny on my walk this morning, I heard this inner wisdom voice, something that said, you know, mm. from chaos comes clarity. Yes. And I'm hearing you. And I, I, I want to say, I'm feeling this really strongly for everyone listening in right now. Like this is, and, and, and this is not just for Sati, although you paid attention and did it. Every one of us, everyone yeah. when you're listening, you have the ability to, to, to have that, whatever that is come through yeah. you. And that's, what I love is that you, 
nurtured it. You listened, you're living it. I love what you said. Like you can be spiritual, have money, you get to serve, you can make a bigger difference. Like it's, it's really a grander vision that the divine had for you. Yeah. It's such a good point too. I I actually think a lot about the correlation between the 9-11 moment in New York and what we're going through right now. And, you know, it is ignited. I mean, we're two years in now, but I don't know if you, like it has ignited a lot of creativity and a lot of new innovative business. Um, people have, you know, stepped up like, and it's hard to do it at home, you know, yeah. like without people. But I, I've been so impressed with that. And I think, again, you know, I think the universe and the earth is just screaming for us to help it heal. Mm-hmm. And um, with that, if you go out into starting something or even, uh, creating something better in your personal life, if it's bettering the world, I think you'll be supported in such a big way right now. You know, it's, we need, we need to collectively move the needle. (laughs) It's not a, I'll take care of myself anymore. Um, and, and sometimes it's hard if you're in a place where like, but I don't even have anything myself at all. And, um, with that mindset, you got to break through that and just start knowing you have abundance um, and and just feel it. And and even if it's that's your mantra, Mm. um, it can change your energy, which will change opportunities. If that makes sense, you're, yeah. And and I don't wanna negate, you know, people who have lost so much and are in a suffering hard place. Um, We all need a lot of support and um, it takes a village right? Mm. So yeah, I'm just encouraging all of that. Well, this is one of the things, and I'd love to talk a little bit about your actual pieces because Mm. what I love, I mean, I've always loved jewelry. I can remember playing in my mom's jewelry when I was little, like the most crazy things I'd put them all on at once, you know, not like I would have like literally every ring, every necklace, every, it's like, look at me, it was just fun. But what I have to say, your, your jewelry is stunning it's also clear. I was like, they must, there's, you can tell the intention you bless it, but there's so many pieces, like, honestly, you know, wearing this pendulum, I use this all the time to make decisions. Um, mm, and nice. I, I really, I, I, tr- I really do. I mean, there's some big decisions I've made with this thing. This yeah. Girl. Great. My friend calls it. She has one. My uh, dear friend, Selena calls it Gina. <laughs> I love, I love it. it. Like, like a genie. Right. And I was like, all right. So I yeah. Oh, I love Gina. that. <laughs> um, and I just, you know, what you've created it, to me, it's beyond just, it's like wearing that reminder, the different, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I have the Malibu, you have so many beautiful pieces. Do you, I would imagine this time probably has inspired even more pieces that you, you know, really <laughs> want people as you're saying, to feel, to feel guided, uh, maybe just to talk for a minute. Cause I'm yeah. sure everyone's going to go, we'll have, by the way, like the site and there, we have a beautiful coupon code and all that, but I really want people to get a sense. Yeah. So, yeah. So from the beginning, I wanted to, um, I was, my hope and my prayer was to design jewelry of all different truths and donate money to children around the world. That was the dream. That was what I woke up so excited about. <laughs> um, but really representing and honoring each truth. My one teacher, Shivananda says that the paths are many, but the truth is one. However you find God, you are so blessed. So to not um, separate, but to more bring together. Like if, if a humps is what's something that resonates you and helps you kind of get up. And I, over the years, people like Satya, I put my piece on, I rub it all day and it works. Like, you know, I've been wearing it for how many years and, and um, it's, it's not, and I think the pieces are pretty. I, I think there's a lot of attention energy, but it's the power of the mind. You know, we have everything tagged with the little healing property of the stone and the symbol meaning. And I used to say, make sure you read the tag before you put it on because you ingest that knowingness. And then I say, it's not the piece either. It's something that represents you. And then your energy expands around it. So because you feel like, oh, I've got this piece that really means a lot to me. Your energy just goes, Whoop, and people notice you and people, I'm always like, oh my God, everybody always compliments me on the piece. And I says, that's because it's resonating who you are. You're, 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 you're showing who you are in the world and what's important. 
Um, and it invokes a deeper conversation around fashion, which is what my biggest thing in the beginning, I was like, yeah, that's really pretty and it's trendy. I'm like, nah, Ganesh is not trendy. He's just important. <laughs> right, like obstacles <laughs> yeah. moved. moved. I am like, yeah, exactly. So, you know, yeah. but like, because the, the pieces are just like, what is that? And then to say, oh, it's a mandala, you know, and this is actually the reminder for me to take a breath when I'm stressed out. Mm. Or, you know, this is Lakshmi and I'm trying to manifest abundance in my life right now. Um, you know, with the pendulum, it's like, this is reminding me that I have all the answers inside me. All I have to do is call upon them. So each piece, as we come up with collections, they're all reminders of what you already have inside you. They just remind you, oh yeah, I got that. I know, I know who I am. I know my truth and let it carry me today. And I'm going to keep reminding and some things I'm going to have somebody come at me and I'm going to rub that little whatever it is and I'm going to get past it. I'm going to keep going through. Mm. Um, but you know, that, that's that been the funnest part of this because so many people over the years, um, I've got like so many generations now <laughs> and I, I was doing a lot of events which are so fun because I get to meet people and they're like, oh, my, my mom turned me onto it and now I got my daughter wearing it and then she, I'm like, really? <laughs> I love that. Um, so... Yeah, you know, I think we anything you put on your body, you know, clothing, jewelry, especially because it's on your skin. Um, we really make sure that one is, of course, the meaning is really important, but also the materials. Just be really careful. There's so many toxins out there. So we use all real gold and we do a beautiful palladium barrier. And, you know, just in any jewelry you buy out there, please, everybody make sure it's um, something you want your skin to absorb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, That's actually a very yeah. good point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anything you put on and, you know, whether it's my jewelry, there's a lot of beautiful spiritual jewelry out there. We're the original yoga inspired. I, I know a lot of people have gotten and, um, you know, have, have a story around whatever you wear, you know, invoke that beautiful conversation of your truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of fun. <laughs> so fun. It, I love what you said. This is something I hadn't thought of, but it's so true. This invoking a deeper conversation around it's it, to me, it's like, it's fashion and it's, it's like devotion and it's, yeah. it's a reminder. I, I, you know, this is, I don't yet have any tattoos. I always have like 500 ideas and then I'm like, but I want this and then I want this. But what I thought of is like, you know what though, jewelry, it's kind of like your, you know, it's almost rather, you know, I love tattoos, they are permanent. Like you can, today, I want to be reminded that I have the wisdom within tomorrow. I might wear my rose quartz melodies. I want a reminder that I'm, you know, I come from heart. Yeah. Like it's just, yeah. a, it's a depth of being. There's something about it. Yeah. yeah. And you could do a little ritual around it too, which I, I like to light a candle every morning, no matter what. And I don't have much time in the morning anymore, but just taking that one minute in the morning before we get so busy, yeah. just light that candle, set that intention, one breath in, one breath out. Mm. And it just completely changes my energy for the day. Mm. Um, so those little things we have to do for ourselves that, that, yeah. that are going to carry us through this great change in the world, right? Yeah, I um, love that. That's so incredible every day that you do that. So yeah. powerful. I a question for you. It's a little bit of a deeper, I think when you embody a name like, like Satya, which is about truth, I'm curious, and you can share whatever as much or as little how yeah. this shows up. I'm curious, just the coaching side of me is like, where has, what has come up in your own life? Have you noticed, I would imagine things that come up that maybe feel like, oh, that doesn't feel true anymore. Or mm -hmm. how has this name like really yeah. shown up in your life, especially over the last 20 years? Mm -hmm. Um, that's helped you to expand into more truth, I guess. Yeah. Well, you know, when you take on a spiritual name and if you're um, connected to a, a lineage of yoga or even Buddhism, um, you can ask for a spiritual name and usually they pull it out from the ethers. Mine were clearly pulled out from somewhere powerful, but when you actually take on a spiritual name, you become that. And fortunately and unfortunately, like I can never tell a lie. <laughs> Right. I was going to say, like, I, and it's really funny because my boys, I have twin boys that are 13. We had that little conversation, you know, I'll say something and I'll just say smudge. We got to, you know, and they're like, mom, your name is true. That's a lie. I'm like, no, it's not a lie. I'm just, <laughs> but they'll call me out on it all the time. Um, 
which I don't lie, but I'm just trying to get them to do something. And right. I have to, right. um, but I, I find that, um, you know, it comes back to me all the time, you know, and, and not really putting out truth, but being truthful to myself, right? Because we all, you know, compromise, um, mm. And, and some compromise, especially in relations, okay, it's, um, uh, it's, it's settling, you know, I think that's when you're not being true to yourself. Mm. Um, and I have a harder time sitting in things. I, and a lot of people sit in things way too long. Um, I kind of can stir and almost get agitated a little quicker. Um, and I've gotten better at, at moving through that, but um, that's definitely something that I'm more aware of owning that name. <laughs> so great. You said something so powerful. I don't even know if you realize you might, but this is really interesting distinction. And I hope everyone embodies, takes what Satya just said, which is you wouldn't necessarily think of it, but settling can be a form of not listening to your truth and not being truthful. And that's like, it's like a different variation, like that settling, and it could be even settling in a job you don't love or in a relationship yeah. you're not, you're not thrilled about, like, and it may not feel like, oh, I'm not telling a lie, but in a way that settling, it's like, it's putting you, you're not fully aligned with your truth, which yeah. which isn't a way that's so I'd never something just went off well you know what it does it, it gnaws away at you you yeah. know I think it it just gets inside you like you know you kind of brush it off but then it always comes up it doesn't go away yeah. <laughs> no it does not go away until you know my dad my dad who's no longer here but it was mm. my best friend and he was my first teacher he said you know you always have three choices and he was a practicing buddhist um you have three choices in life with every situation mm. um you can endure it you can change it or you can run <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's funny i till this day i ask myself all the time you know, like, look, do I want to change it? Can I endure it? Is it enough where I'm still happy? I'm getting more than I'm losing. You know, you got to weigh it out. Um, or do I just have to get the hell out of here? <laughs> Which, you know, it's funny because the pandemic yeah. has really started that up for a lot of people, yeah. right? People have shifted, moved, changed jobs, changed careers. And it's like, wow. But when you think about those three choices, you can really sit and meditate on them. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a powerful tool I use a lot. It's very empowering too, because all of them, you're making that conscious choice. So if you're gonna run, do it consciously, you know, don't, you're gonna endure it. Don't complain. You can't yeah, complain exactly. if you're enjoying it. You made a decision. Right. Yeah. I just heard this quote from the book, Tara Brock, who I'm sure you know her book, uh, trust the trust the gold. And it was this healer that said the one thing that healed the most amount of people was saying, thank you for everything. I have no complaints. Okay. Yes. I feel like that would be, you know, if you're going to be in the endurance camp, you're going to take on that one. <laughs> yes. It's so true. And there's, it's really easy to complain right now. It's <laughs> and really, a lot of people are doing it. <laughs> it's really easy. I think this is, this is important though, because you were talking about not, you know, watching your energy, not watching the news, really staying close to, to your, you know, you're getting quiet, listening in. And it's true. There are definitely, there's, there's a lot you could say to complain about yet. There's so much to focus on that. As you said, call in your angels, get quiet yeah. with yourself. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I really don't want to um, downplay the, the, yeah. the um, exhaustion people are feeling and oh, yeah. the fear and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's hard because you can't judge, like everybody's got different makeups and I have been doing this a really long time and I never like to make it sound effortless. I yeah. worked really, really hard to get to where I am and I had a lot of losses before I've had wins mm. and I still continue to get a lot of losses, but they don't feel as bad. Mm. Um, but, you know, that's the choice in life. You know, we just keep climbing, we keep climbing and, and every, every challenge is an opportunity. Mm. You just have to see it. Okay, what's my lesson in this? God, this really sucks. Like, I really don't wanna go through this. Yeah. But instead saying, okay, wow, this is gonna be rough for me, but I really wanna know what the lesson is. How can I learn from this? 
this lesson you brought in front of me. And I, when I do that, I start seeing, oh, I'm supposed to learn compassion. Oh, um, I need to learn how to be more patient. Or, oh, I need to know what it's like to lose something. Mm. And, and then from that, your compassion just grows. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah that um, all the challenges and all the, the lessons, you know, just, you know, hopefully, you know, you just become wiser. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really, this is so, I feel like it's um, the ointment that's needed for the, for the wound right now, what you're saying, it feels like this is like, these words are the elixir, like to remember, you know, cause it is a challenge. It's a real, and, and every, and I love what you said. We don't judge. Everyone's doing it different and has a different makeup. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, every challenge there's an opportunity and to keep looking for, all right, what am I learning? How am I growing? What wants to be birthed through me now? And even, and acknowledging the pain. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just like surrender. I sometimes get in front of my altar and I'm just like, start crying my eyeballs out. I love to cry. I always encourage crying. I think God gave us these incredible little tear ducts and I use them all the time because it releases. Um, but sometimes I'll be like, oh, I can't. And you release that energy, that, that pent up sadness or anger. And it's amazing how the next day you feel a little better. Like, okay, thanks. What just happened? Um, but sometimes you just have to surrender and acknowledge, you know, this really sucks. I don't want to have to do this. And yet the universe says, yes, you do. And you're like, okay, I'll do my best. Can you give me a little energy to make it happen? <laughs> yeah. Make me feel a little better about it. And then they show up and you're like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. yeah. It's like a long, <laughs> long trek. I keep seeing Mount Kilimanjaro. We just <laughs> the next yeah. base camp. Here we are. Yeah. So in terms of, you know, one of the last questions I love to just ask is you already are leaving such a legacy. I mean, with your foundation, with what you're doing, I keep coming back to this beautiful, pure intention, your dream to design jewelry, jewelry of all different truths and donate money to kids. Like I just, I love it. Just, it's so pure. There's, it's such, there's such purity in there. How do you see, you know, just tapping into kind of your own dreams now and visioning and where the world is, what, how do you want to continue to step forward? And you are making a huge impact and what, what's important to you now? What do you, what do you see? Yeah, next- such a good question. I've been meditating on that a lot, mm. you know, and the one thing we've instilled is um, just really amping up the philanthropic work that we do. And um, we've done a five-year commitment um, for a yearly donation to the kids in India, the two schools. Um, it's one of them is a Tibetan Lama who has 300 beautiful Tibetan children on the India Tibetan border mm-hmm. and then or China um, and then my beautiful Ramana's garden in India so we've done a five-year commitment and um, of donating a good amount of money per year that's going to help a lot of kids mm-hmm. um, so that that feels really good and it, it's very motivating um, for me personally like I would love to keep designing beautiful jewelry that makes everybody happy. Um, but I, I'd like to also help, you know, give the tools and share the tools I've learned on my, my very long journey. And I feel like, you know, there's some wisdom, very humble wisdom, because my ego is in check, which a lot of people don't have, um, is important to share and help support um, women, in any way I can, you know, follow their dreams or, or you know, step up to what they need. Why? Um, and I don't know how it's going to happen. I, I, I did a lot of teaching in my days um, at um, Propala and Omega, like some of the bigger, and, you know, those have been shut down for two years. I've done a couple of online model workshops. I do these creative, but um, I'd like to, if, if, you know, I'd like to offer more. I'd like to help people, younger people too, you know, 20s and 30s are tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. The universe will open up. But yeah, we're doing a lot of work with philanthropic. I'm doing an amazing 20 year anniversary collection um, that we're going to be focusing on all truths. And I made this one mm-hmm. pendant that is going to donate 100 percent of the profits to the foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's just uh, we're all super excited. We're using the, the stone of emerald. 
Ooh. Stone of Ooh. love, power, it's so pretty. And the end, the heart chakra. Oh, I'm like, I might have to get that. When that <laughs> I'll get you one. <laughs> Many other things. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, you, I just, so, I mean, I'm just going to say pause. Everyone listening, notice, okay, I, this is a good, this is a good litmus test. Listen, notice your energy now after this conversation with Satya, notice I'm like flying high, which I always go, you know, as empaths, like I can feel energy. I know you're I'm guessing you're empath, empath as well. I, yeah, I think so. You I feel it? your energy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, well, there's just, you know, so uh -huh. tune in, notice. And I, I just thank you. Oh my gosh. You know, for being such an authentic, beautiful inspiration. And as you said, you know, I think I, it's funny. I just recorded a session about ego and how sometimes for some of us, it's good to have a healthy, a healthy sense of ego, but oftentimes what we can see is the over extenuated version of ego. And I got to say with you, you are like one of the most genuine, authentic. You've just, oh, thank you. you're, you're in, there's like the green plant behind you. If you're watching this, you can see it if you're listening. And it just reminds me of what you said, the heart chakra. And, you know, mm. Satya, you are like living heart, you know, you're mm. living from there. I can, I can just feel it. And one of the last questions I always ask, I call them heart flares where mm. your heart's like, wait a minute, I didn't say this, or I have a download and I want to say this. So uh, I always like to ask if there's any, any heart flares that you'd like to share. Um, well, you know, I, I think always just trust yourself, you know, just, mm. you know, we, we all have to tap in. I never in a million years would have said, oh, I'm going to start a multi-million dollar jewelry company and run it. For like I was just somebody who didn't know anything mm. and I didn't have the confidence, um, and I still just pinch myself and I tapped into it, but I worked hard at it. Don't give up. Just keep mm -hmm. working hard at tapping into your power, your truth. Um, and, you know, I believe the power of prayer. It's, it's there for you, all of us. Nobody's excluded. <laughs> Nobody. Um, and I hope that this just gave everybody a little spark to get off the couch. <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh. Major spark, like major. Yeah. Yes. The power of prayer is for all of us. No one is denied. No one is set aside. Absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 I have to say, and it's interesting because just the one thing you said, you didn't have the expertise in starting a jewelry business. I, I mean, I, I miss you. So I want everyone to hear that because it wasn't like you had the whole like plan or knew who or how or what yeah. it it's that dream it, it, you know and the divine just propelled you and that's 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 really powerful i think we can all take away you know if you're staying in that place and you you said it before meditation in inward time inside prayer connection and asking you know what it sounds like is it really came from that heart center that dream of you wanted to make a big difference. Yeah, I know I, my, my partner, my business partner at the time, she's like, we got to put a business plan together. I'm like, no, we don't have the time. Right. <laughs> no, we got work to do. And like, you know, we just, you push forward. A lot of it is, is you know, you learn as you move forward. Mm -hmm. I'm a doer. So sometimes you just got to get your hands in there. Yeah. Otherwise your mind takes over. And we know what happens then. I can't yeah. do it. I'm not going to, it's not the time. I don't have yeah. the money. I don't have, well, you know. So sometimes you just got to do it. Do one little thing that moves you forward mm -hmm. every day. One little thing. And, oh, I want to share. Can I have one more? Uh, that oh, you have as many heart players okay. as you want. So, so yeah. I would like to put one thing out into the world. If everybody listening could do um, one act of kindness every single day for the next mm -hmm. I'm going to just give you 10 days. You got to count them 10 days. And it could be as simple as smiling at somebody on the street that looks really sad. It could be, oh, I love your dress or, oh, you look beautiful today. So 10 acts of loving kindness from today for the next 10 days and awesome. see what happens to you. <laughs> it's awesome. so awesome. <laughs> You are like living, breathing of this. So I'm just saying like, who wouldn't do this? Who wouldn't? Yeah. It yeah. changes everything. It really does. Yeah. It's true. I actually, I, I'm like, now I'm like, all right, heart flare here. I have to say, with the, <laughs> love what you said, the tear ducts. I had this experience. Where was I? I, oh, I was like, I think I was at Whole Foods checking out. And the person there who was checked was just like, I could feel her and she was mm. having a tough day. And I'm like, you're doing an awesome, I said something and Aww. I, 
busted out crying. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, but I'm really touched. Like you could, I could just feel, you know, it made her day. And it was so true. It's just, I could see like, what a special change. Oh, you can change somebody's life. You can change somebody's day. You can give them that little bit of hope that they were just about to not have one kind word. It's crazy. We have the power to do that. Could you imagine? And how empowering it is to put a smile on somebody's face who is really miserable in a, in a, in a, in a joke grocery store. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Totally. Love yeah. it. Oh, I love it. I'm like, did you become good friends with her? You would go out to lunch. Yeah, I know. Now we're like BFF. I got her a pendulum. No, and I'm, it's funny. I haven't seen her since going back. So I don't know if that was her store, but I, I mean, she like started to, I just started crying. It was so touching. And I was like, I'm going to start telling people I do, but I'm like, I'm going to just all the time. Why not? And it's what you're saying. Yeah. You never know, but it can let's be- do it. Could you imagine the energy that's going to happen in the next 10 days? Woo! I know. I'm like, we should Spread do a it. challenge. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm, I'm on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it changes everything it changes for the person, your own vibration. Absolutely. Well, Oh my goodness, Satya, you are, what a joy, what a delight. This was just so nice to meet you. So amazing. Come on over. Let's go hang out. (laughs) I would love it. I can't thank you enough. This was such a gift to be with you today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, We'll be in touch. (laughs) Yay.